Thank you for your interest in or purchase of Talon, the thermoplastic acrylic elastomer used for the retention of intraocclusal dental appliances. Talon has been improving revenues and profits for labs throughout North America since 1992. Talon makes conventional splints and intraocclusal appliances obsolete. Talon eliminates the need to duplicate models, survey casts, block out undercuts, and to use wire for retention. The remake rate for Talon splints is virtually zero. This short presentation will demonstrate two laboratory techniques for the fabrication of Talon appliances. Proper model preparation is important for both Talon techniques. The model base should be a minimum of one quarter to one half inch in height. The distal surface of the cast should be beveled toward the occlusal at an angle of at least five to ten degrees. This will facilitate the removal and replacement of the cast in the hydrocolloid mold. All sharp edges should be beveled to eliminate damage to the hydrocolloid mold during replacement. Perfect the dental anatomy and, using plaster, make necessary repairs to any voids in the cast or dentition. Paint acrylic separating fluid on the cast and brush away any excess from the undercuts and embrasures. Be sure to cover the full dentition extending apical to the free gingival margin and allow it to dry. The use of a single sheet of soft setup wax folded in half is recommended. Cut an arch from the warmed wax and adapt it to the cast. Trim the wax and loot the entire periphery to the cast. The principle of uniform thickness with respect to polymerization applies. Some laboratories have suggested the use of a sheet of three millimeters silicone mouth guard sheet material as an alternative to wax. This method may reduce labor time and assure uniform thickness. While the wax ups can be reused from case to case, the formed material is disposable. The hydrated wax up is centrally positioned in the flask. Comfort Acrylics Incorporated manufactures a flask which is specifically designed for the Talon hydrocolloid technique. The flask top is repositioned and clipped securely in place, avoiding movement of the cast. The white ring is placed on top of the flask, which will serve as a reservoir for the hydrocolloid, which contracts as it cools. The flask is placed for investment with the conditioned hydrocolloid. Place the flask in cold water at a depth of approximately 3 quarters inch for approximately 35 to 45 minutes. When the hydrocolloid is set, remove the reservoir, flask clips, and flask bottom to expose the cast. The cast is gently removed with leverage. Removal of the wax from the mold or the cast is best accomplished using warm water. The sprue hole cutter provided with your flask is used to prepare three sprue holes. Cut the anterior hole from inside the mold starting from the apical margin of the wax up cutting outward toward the edge of the flask. The posterior sprue holes are cut from inside of the mold starting at the apical margin of the wax up toward the edge of the flask. Use light air pressure to remove all loose remnants of hydrocolloid, wax, or debris from inside the mold and also from the cast. Replace the cast in the mold, being careful to avoid damage to the hydrocolloid. Place a sheet of denture packing film under the cast base to assist in keeping the flask clean. Remove the flask top in preparation for filling the lost wax space with talon. On receipt of your dispenser, the plunger rod may be wedged in its full forward position. If this occurs, grasp the posterior portion of the handle, not the trigger, depress the release lever with your thumb, and lightly strike the plunger end against a solid surface. Retract the plunger rod to its full posterior position. Retrieve the tube of talon from the refrigerator and place it in the dispenser sleeve. Attach the sleeve to the dispenser mechanism with a twist to lock it in place. The use of vinyl or latex gloves is recommended to avoid incidental contact with the skin. Please review the MSDS provided. Orient the flasks so the anterior sprue hole for filling is facing the operator. The flask is inclined so the anterior sprue hole is at the lowest point. The nozzle of the talon tube is inserted 
in the anterior sprue hole with light pressure to avoid leakage. The talon is dispensed slowly until it extrudes from both posterior sprue holes. The nozzle is removed and the flask is returned to the bench. The nozzle is recapped, the sleeve disengaged from the dispensing mechanism and stored in the refrigerator. The hydrocolloid plugs are retrieved from the sprue hole cutter using the plunger provided. The excess talon is wiped from the mold using a paper towel. The plugs are placed in the sprue holes to a depth of one quarter inch and cut flush with the mold. A sheet of denture packing film covers the mold and the flask top and locking clips are replaced. Tip the flask upright so the posterior of the appliance is down in preparation for placement in the curing vessel. The flask is placed in the heated pressure vessel oriented with the anterior of the appliance up. The water depth is approximately one half inch and is heated to a temperature of 140 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. The vessel is closed and pressurized to 20 pounds per square inch. The cure time is two hours plus 15 minutes per flask. Simple alternatives to the self-heated pressure vessel involve the use of a double boiler arrangement. A commercial grade hot plate can be used to heat an eight quart kettle of water to 165 degrees Fahrenheit in which a standard pressure vessel can be suspended. A standard stem thermometer will assure accurate water bath temperatures. Another alternative is the use of the water in a typical denture curing tank at 165 degrees Fahrenheit to produce a temperature of 155 degrees Fahrenheit inside a pressurized vessel partially submerged in that water. The pressure is released and the flask is removed from the pressure vessel. The flask is cooled under cold tap water for handling. The clips are removed from the flask and the cast is exposed. Remove the cast from the hydrocolloid and remove the cured talon from the hydrocolloid or the cast. Rinse under cold tap water. The opacity noted is the result of the heat, pressure, and humidity of the curing process. The talon will be very pliable and there should be no concern about distortion. The memory of the polymer is assured. The next step is the dehydration of talon unless a heat cured acrylic is planned. If heat cure is used, dehydration is accomplished following lamination. The opacity of the talon substructure will clear naturally in ambient air over a period of three to five days. We recommend, however, that dehydration be accomplished using a typical food dehydrator. These can be purchased at your local houseware store such as Walmart or Kmart for approximately $35 to $40. Crystal clarity can be achieved in approximately 1.5 to 2 hours. Following dehydration, the excess talon material is removed to paper thinness from the occlusal and between the cuspids using a heatless lathe wheel and acrylic burrs. The remaining talon should be paper thin to maximize the strength of the occlusal laminate. You should think of talon as the retentive portion of the hard splint you now make. Use an acrylic burr lengthwise in the central groove of the posterior teeth to minimize talon on the occlusal surface. Minor perforations on the cusp tips are acceptable and provide perfect stability for the finished appliance. Large perforations should be avoided. We recommend sharp burrs, light pressure, and cooling with water if necessary to avoid accumulation in the flutes of the burrs. A hairdryer is particularly useful in softening the talon substructure for readaptation to the master cast. With the interocclusal space set, a wax strip is adapted to the talon and extends to the height of the opposing cusp tips. The length of the anterior portion can be adjusted to facilitate the production of guidance ramps if desired. The wax is looted to the talon to contain the methyl methacrylate lamination. Acrylic separating fluid is painted onto the opposing teeth. We recommend the use of blue acrylic stain to mildly color the laminate. This will decrease the yellowing of the cold cure acrylics over time, as well as to provide a diamond-like appearance which is appealing. A small amount of the monomer is painted onto the prepared surface of the talon. Use only a small amount to avoid seepage through any perforations. 
The acrylic is mixed and rolled to eliminate any air bubbles. When at a flowable stage, the acrylic is poured onto the occlusal, avoiding the entrapment of air. When the acrylic is at the non-sticky dough stage, the articulator is closed and any excesses are removed from the opposing undercuts and embrasures using a spatula. Guidance ramps can be prepared for later equilibration. The articulator is then placed in the pressure pot for curing in accordance with the manufacturer's specifications. When the laminate cure is complete, the articulator is removed from the pot and the articulator is carefully opened. Bilateral traction is applied to the appliance for removal from the cast. The wax is removed from the appliance and it is now ready for gross finishing. A heatless wheel is used to remove excess acrylic and acrylic burrs are used for the gross equilibration. We recommend the use of rubber wheels and polishers for the final equilibration. Pumice will remove scratches and the final buff is facilitated by chilling the appliance under cold tap water prior to the buff. The final adjustments for retention can be made by using a water bath of body temperature water in order to accurately predict what the dentist or staff will experience during the delivery. We recommend a brush scrubbing with an antiseptic soap, then rinse and dip in mouthwash. The excess mouthwash is shaken off and the appliance is bagged for delivery. The wax for the gypsum technique is the same as the hydrocolloid technique with the exception of an additional wax strip on the occlusal which forms a reservoir to supply the contracting talon during polymerization. The investment for this technique uses a split ring supplied by Comfort Acrylics Incorporated. A creamy mixture of equal parts of pumice and plaster is prepared and the ring is filled two-thirds full. The hydrated wax up is pushed into the investment until the occlusal surface of the wax is flush with the rim of the ring. The remaining investment material is added to fill the tongue or palate and around the buckle or lingual. When the investment is set, only the occlusal of the wax will be visible. The wax is boiled out, leaving the teeth visible within a trough of the investment. As soon as it is cool enough, Acrylic separating fluid is brushed throughout the trough and teeth, removing any excess from the undercuts and embrasures. The investment should not be allowed to dehydrate. In a well-ventilated area, talon is then dispensed into the trough, avoiding the entrapment of air bubbles. An inadequate amount of talon may result in occlusal voids as a result of polymerization contraction. If such voids occur, simply add more talon and re-cure. Allow the ring to bench set for a few minutes should there be any air entrapped. A sheet of denture packing film is placed on the occlusal using a finger to seal against the talon. It is important to avoid oxygen contamination during polymerization. The ring is placed in the pressure vessel out of the direct line of the incoming stream of pressurized air to avoid a blowout of the material. The pressure vessel is pressurized to 20 pounds per square inch, heated to 165 degrees Fahrenheit for a period of two hours plus 15 minutes per flask. If a water bath is used rather than the self-heating vessel, a temperature of 175 degrees Fahrenheit is required. When removed from the pressure vessel, the ring is rinsed under cold tap water to allow the removal of the separating film. The split ring is removed and the master cast is recovered without damage from the weak investment material. This talon substructure is now ready for dehydration and lamination identical to the technique demonstrated earlier. Comfort Acrylics Incorporated wants to earn and keep your splint business. Your customers want this product. Comfort Acrylics Incorporated has a wide variety of cooperative marketing programs including customized display advertising and brochures, website links, and continuing dental education lectures. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please call our toll-free number and be sure to visit our website. Thank you very much.